All right, guys, Sanch here. Welcome back to another episode on the Bodybuilding News Network. I want to thank everyone so much. Uh, the account is now monetized, so hopefully when we start getting some ad revenue flowing in here, we can get some cool giveaways. Let me know in the comment sections what brands you guys want to see. Uh, obviously, I have uh, tried a lot of stuff, so uh, if you know something specific that you want to see or uh, a giveaway that you want to see, let me know. I'll see what I can do with that brand. But in this video, we're going to be covering the 2021 Puerto Vallarta Pro, specifically the 212 Showcase or the 212 lineup. Now, it's going to be three or four days away. Well, shoot, you know, I got the scorecard right here. Sanch, why don't you just look at your notes? You have them right there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's July 31st through August 1st. So we have four days. Four days until it starts. I'm not sure if the 212 is on the first day or the second day. Uh, let me know in the comment sections below if you guys know that. But uh, very excited to see another Olympia qualifying bodybuilding show, specifically the 212 class. Now, I'm not sure if this was something that flew under the radar or if it was something that uh, was intentionally not advertised as much as it could have been, as it is a 212 IFBB Pro Olympia qualification show for the 2021 Mr. Olympia. You would expect a lot of people to be slipping into this show, uh, but as we look at this scorecard, and obviously there's no disrespect to uh, these competitors, but everyone is from Mexico or Colombia except for one guy from New Jersey and one guy from Texas. Um, very interesting. We have a Brazil as well in here, uh, but a lot of Mexico, a lot of Colombia, well, not a lot, but one Colombia, one Brazil, and two U.S. competitors. So for $75,000 uh, prize purse for the winner, and an Olympia qualification, you would have expected to see a lot of people showing up for this show. I'm very excited to see another pro show. It'll be interesting to see uh, how this lineup is going to be, uh, how it's going to stack up, because uh, I don't want to give out too much of my predictions, but we just saw Esteban Bravo on stage. We just saw Jorge Gomez. We just saw Boaz um, Henry. He goes by a couple different names. His Instagram is different than his NPC News Online account, so it's kind of difficult to figure out um, what people want to be called. But Boaz, uh, we just saw him at the Puerto Rico Pro. Raul Sanchez, we just saw him at the Chicago Pro, so he's going to be fresh. Uh, Noel Adame, we saw him at the Indy Pro where he placed second. Yes, second. And then at the New York Pro, he placed fifth. So... Probably going to be one of the favorites to uh, potentially win this show, but uh, I don't want you to overlook Esteban Bravo. Uh, I think he has a phenomenal physique, and it's going to be a very close battle uh, for that first, second, and potentially even that third place spot. Uh, and I don't want to overlook Raul Sanchez. I think he has a really good shot of doing well at this show as well. He's very wide, very full. Uh, a lot of this is going to come down to looking at how people are going to be comparing in that front double and that front lat, in my opinion. Uh, the back is always nice to see, um, but when you look at the chest development, you look at the shoulder development, uh, it's a little, very comparable for a lot of these competitors. But now that I'm done ranting, let's go ahead and go through each of these competitors, learn a little bit about them, their previous showings, and how they're looking on their Instagram potentially as we are a whopping four days out from this pro show. And let's go ahead and start off with Noel Adame. I used to say Adam, but I'm pretty sure it's Adame. The last time we said uh, we saw him, like I said, was at the 2021 20, New York Pro. Uh, he actually placed third, so apologies. Apologies, he placed third. And then another show, he placed fifth. So I'm guessing the Indie Pro, he placed fifth. Um, and it is what it is. Now, he's probably going to be one of the favorites uh, to win this show, in my opinion. He has... Uh, I don't want to say by far, but he has a very good physique. He's very full, very wide, massive Rami-esque legs. But if you look, let's get this a little bigger here. If you look at these quads, he has the separations. He has that 212 leg definition and separation all the way into the posing trunks. And honestly, guys, 
it's what's missing in the open class and a lot of these competitors. So I love seeing this. I love seeing this cross striation in the chest muscle as, lo as well as the vascularity in the biceps. You don't get to see this very often as well, that deep separation in the chest muscles. That is a very specific trait uh, that Noel likes to hold here. Uh, I love seeing it. Hopefully we get to see this on stage here at the, I'm going to keep butchering this name, so I'm going to keep it up, the Puerto Vallarta, Vallarta? it's pretty close for a Wisconsin guy, all right? I'm pretty much Canadian. Like, I shouldn't be able to say that stuff. <laughs> but moving into the second competitor, we have uh, Ralph Diaz Arechega. Apologies, of course, if I butchered that one. Out of Mexico as well. The last time we saw him was at the 2018 Toronto Pro Show, actually. Now, this could be the wrong competitor. I do apologize. Uh, it's a little tough finding these guys. But the last time we saw him, he placed 13th in Classic Physique. But if this is the right guy, uh, he definitely has the 212 legs. Look at that Look at that deep separation, striation going all the way into the posing trunks. You can just imagine him with uh, actual posing trunks on. But uh, very comparable physique. Somewhat lacking in the biceps, but it's been three years since this photo was taken. Uh, there could be a lot of improvements here. He has the small waist. He has the huge flaring legs. Um, and then he also has a full chest. So... Lots of possibility coming out of this competitor. He could be a dark horse. It's really hard to tell. Uh, let's finish up going through all the competitors, and then I'll give you guys a little bit more of a prediction once we're done talking about everyone. Moving over to his Instagram. Uh, it looks like if this is the right competitor, I do apologize. But uh, legs still look very comparable and big. Um, but this is a very, very old photo from 2016. So it's really... Um, it's not ideal. It's not... Uh, not really much we can compare here. Wow, look how look how the Tampa Pro used to look in 2016. That's crazy looking. Anywho, uh, if this is his, his uh, profile, awesome. If not, I do apologize, but it doesn't look like there's much of a physique update to share with you guys. Moving into the next competitor, Giovanni Azpetia. That's pretty close. That's pretty close. Last time we saw uh, Glavani, Glavani, there's an L in there. It's not an I. Looks like an I to me. Who knows? Maybe I spelled it wrong. Glavani Azpetea. The last time we saw him was at the 2017 Vancouver. So another Canadian uh, bodybuilding show. He placed 15th. Now this is from 2017. So it's going to be a little tough to see um, how he's going to be shaping up. I actually like his physique. I think he's very well built structurally. Uh, he definitely did not come in shape uh, to the extent of placing in that top 10 or that, that first call out or winning the show. But I think that uh, there could be some possibility for him to do well at this show. He has, even though he's not very conditioned uh, in the midsection, the chest, you can see uh, potentially some gyno here. But the quads, the teardrops, the cross feathering, that uh, that Ronnie esque, that I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there. I was gonna say Kai Green, but I'm not trying to give him a platform anymore. That Ronnie esque teardrops and that outer sweep, the cross uh, feathering, you don't see that very often. So it's nice to see. And also looking very vascular, very full midsection controlled. I like to see that. Um, Hopefully, with the increased conditioning, we'll see a little bit more in the abdominal section. Potentially, a little bit of a herniation here in the, in the belly button, but who knows? It's been three years, almost four years for this guy. So, it's really hard to tell uh, how he's going to be showing up based off this photo here. But, luckily, he's been posting some uh, physique updates. This one is from yesterday. Looking, uh, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. We can see the midsection has come in. Um, potentially the gyno has been fixed. The legs still look big. Lots of uh, lots of possibilities here. Looks like it's a modeling shot. So I don't know if it was more focused on showing the conditioning that he's in. This would be a much better indicator of what kind of conditioning we can expect from oh it is an i it is an i geo is his, is what he goes by good that's a lot easier for me i can call him geo i like what i'm seeing here i like seeing the definitions and striations in the shoulders the triceps look freaky yeah definitely look out for geo 
coming to the Puerto Vallarta Pro uh, in Mexico in four days. A competitor we are very familiar with is Esteban Bravo. Uh, his full name on the scorecard is much longer. Sometimes uh, he just goes by the Fajuen, but uh, Esteban Bravo is what he goes by on the NPC News Online. But if you want to find him on Instagram, he goes by these this one, Esteban Fajuen. Fajuen? Fajuen? Something like that. But I like his physique. He was actually one of my favorites. I thought he was going to be placing very well, maybe fifth, sixth. Turns out that's pretty much what he got there at the Chicago Pro. Big, full chest, beautiful, crazy, freaky looking legs. Potentially, I'll say it now, potentially I could see him winning this show. Uh, I, li- I would really like to see him stand side by side with Noel Adame. I think that'd be a very good comparison. Um, he has the mass, he has the controlled midsection, he had the conditioning of Chicago, and that's only going to improve with, you know, a little under a week, um, between the shows. So very exciting to see, uh, how he's going to look. Uh, we really don't need to show the Instagram because this is pretty much what we're going to expect, either a fuller or a flatter, uh, more conditioned or a more conditioned version of this. But if we move over to his Instagram... I have them all in the tabs, right? So it's a little bit easier to to show off. Uh, This is his most recent physique update as of two hours ago. Just a beautiful physique. Very controlled, conditioned. He has that split ab. Sometimes you don't see that very often. He has plenty of followers, so you don't need to go follow him. But if you have not, definitely do so. But uh, yeah, definitely going to be one of my favorites to potentially win uh, this upcoming show in Mexico. Uh, next up on the scorecard is Leonardis Cardoza. I couldn't find his scorecard and I couldn't find his Instagram, so apologies. If you know him, I'll link his stuff in the description and I'll put out a video talking about him coming into this pro show. But uh, next on the scorecard after uh, Leonardis is going to be Victor Eric Lopez Garcia. The last time we saw Victor was at the 2017 NPC Amateur Olympia, where he placed uh, first. He got his pro card at the Amateur Olympia. So uh, probably a lot of hype coming from this competitor, as uh, the last time we saw him was winning an Amateur Olympia. Uh, In my opinion, that's a a big, big thing to do. Um, I like what I see here. It's going to really depend on how conditioned he's going to be coming to uh, to place well at this show. He does look like an older gentleman, so there's going to be some there's going to be some things that he's going to have to be battling to win out on some of these very very young competitors, uh, these up and coming pros. And I couldn't find his his Instagram, so we don't really have a um, a physique update. So I do apologize for that. But next on the scorecard is Jorge Gomez. And I think this is the right Jorge Gomez. When you click on it, it's a a very common name. There's like five different competitors on the NPC News Online for Jorge Gomez. Um, I don't understand how they stay in business with just how like terribly unprofessional they are. But it is what it is. That is the premier outlet for these contest show photos. So it is what it is. But uh, I like what he's seeing. I uh, like what I'm seeing here. He did place 10th at the 2021 Extreme Bodybuilding and Fitness Pro, 10th place in the Classic Physique. So there's going to be some transition. There's going to be some stuff that's going to correlate. There's going to be some stuff that doesn't correlate. His condition will probably increase. I like to see that 212 cross striations all the way into the posing trunks. Again, imagine those posing trunks on him. I think there's definitely some. Uh, some pieces of this pose that are uh, not to be desired, but uh, there could be some improvements here. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get his Instagram as well. Uh, there's three competitors on this list. I couldn't find their Instagrams. So I do apologize to Jorge. Please let me know if you guys have his information in the comment sections below. And next, uh, no surprise and no stranger to this channel, is Boaz Oliveira or Boaz Henrique. Is it Enrique or Henrique? I think the H is silent, right? Enrique? Let me know. Let me know. And like I said in the introduction of the video, the last time we saw him, last time we saw Boaz, was at the Puerto Rico Pro. He placed third in the 212. Uh, That does sound like a very, very good placing. I'm hoping that he does very well at this upcoming show. 
Uh, I think there was four competitors at the last show, so not so much of a deep lineup. We have 11 competitors as of today, the 28th of July. So hopefully we get to see a very well-conditioned version of Boaz coming into this show. Looking at his Instagram, lots of conditioning. He looks like he's going to be coming in proper. He is uh, working with Chris Aceto, so that's always good to hear. I like what I'm seeing. Pretty much I like what I'm seeing. He's very conditioned. He's very full and everywhere you want to see. He does look like a smaller competitor. Now, the 212 is usually shorter competitors. They're smaller in stature. Uh, but he looks especially shorter. So I'd love to know uh, his height coming into this show. But uh, best of luck to Boaz. Best of luck. Next on the list is Carlos Rodriguez. Now, there was another, I'll put him up now. There was this Carlos Rodriguez that just turned pro uh, in Orlando at the Amateur Olympias in 2020. Uh, I remember seeing him on the Fernando Arroyo podcast, or, uh, uh, Instagram channel. So I was very excited when I saw this. Um, but I was corrected. This is probably not the right one. Uh, we're probably going to be looking at this Carlos Rodriguez. Again, uh, impressive physique. I think I could I could see him in that top four, top five. Uh, but this should be the proper Carlos Rodriguez coming into uh, this upcoming show. Taking a look at his Instagram here, he goes by Charlie Rodriguez. So uh, have fun trying to find these athletes if you guys ever tried to ever try to make a video just just let me know how how much fun it is trying to find these athletes um and this is from four days ago i would be interested to see the conditioning coming into the show because you can see there's a lot of water left over here not a lot of separation in the hamstrings Yeah, definitely going to be interesting to see how uh, full he comes in. It looks like he's going to be coming in full as a house. Uh, but the conditioning is going to be very interesting to see coming into this show. You can see some separation in the hamstrings, but there's a lot of water left over. But um, that's just my critique. Uh, Charlie, hopefully you come in in fantastic conditioning. I still think you'll place in that top five. Uh, but best of luck coming up here on the Valar the Puerto Vallarta. Puerto Vallarta Pro. Next on the list is Raul Sanchez. Uh, we just saw him at the Chicago Pro. Fantastic. Big, full. I remember during pre-judging when he was standing next to Keon Pearson, I thought they looked very comparable in some of the shots. Uh, Raul was ecstatic to pose next to Keon and get those beautiful comparison shots. Uh, it's nice. And that's something that a lot of these competitors want. They want to be, even if they're not even going to get into that first call out, or if somebody's like the, um, uh, the Derek guy that plays 16th, um, I'm sure he would want to place next to or stand next to Keon to get those comparison shots. You, you do that, you compare yourself against uh, potentially some of the best in your sport, you'll be able to see where you're lacking and where you need to improve. You can also talk with judges and see where you need to improve. So uh, I'm sure Raul was thrilled to have that. Looking at his Instagram, uh, Again, it's kind of the same narrative. He hasn't posted much since that show. So we should be expecting to see a very similar package. Of course, there's going to be some variables. He could come in a little bit more crisper. He could come in a little bit bigger, fuller. It's really dep It really depends on, uh, on that size game. Uh, I think if I were Raul, I would probably think about trying to match the conditioning of Noel, but also trying to fight to have the same size as well. Because that's at the end of the day, um, Noel is definitely going to be the favorite for the show uh, as of today. And the last competitor on this list is Ra Rashid. Rashid Soki or Sauki. Uh, apologies if I said it wrong. I'm, I, I'm sure I say all these names wrong. But the last time we saw Rashid, or Rashid, 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 it's probably Rashid, was at the 2020 Baltimore Classic Masters Pro, uh, where he placed third. So he, he earned his pro card earlier, and then uh, he, he competed at this show, placed third in the 50s plus. 
no ris- uh, disrespect to Rashid. Not sure where we're going to see him in this lineup. Um, maybe we'll see him at the very tip of that second call out, uh, but it's really hard to tell. Sometimes conditioning can do a, a world of difference for you, but um, you know it is what it is for a competitor over fifty. Uh, it's usually not somebody who's going to be winning, uh, winning such a, a, a deep lineup here at the Puerto Vallarta Pro. All right, guys, uh, I uh, stumbled through that one. It was, it was a pretty tough video. It's uh, it's interesting to see that there's just not a lot of coverage for this show. It is a Pro 212 Olympia qualifying show, so there should be more coverage than there is right now. Uh, I know Daniel over at Bodybuilders Without Borders, he posted a picture saying, hey, I didn't even know this was a show. I've never heard of it. Um, I'm going to check the scorecards and see if there's been previous years where we've had a Puerto Vallarta. Uh, I don't think there has been. I've never seen it before. I've never heard of it. But uh, it's cool to see another Olympia qualifying pro show. More opportunities for these competitors to get on stage and show what they've been working hard to achieve and develop in terms of their physique, their conditioning, things like that. So... I hope you guys enjoyed another episode on the Bodybuilding News Network, specifically another episode of Bodybuilding Today, where we talked about the 212 lineup for the 2021 Puerto Vallarta. I'm getting it. At the end of the video, I finally figured it out in the Men's 212 Bodybuilding Showcase or class. Uh, I'm your host, Sanch. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section below if there's any videos specifically that you want to see. We have uh, me and Ty. We're going to hop on here and do a Chicago breakdown for uh, how we felt about the 212, the Classic, and the Open, specifically those three. Uh, And then I also have, uh, I actually have uh, Boaz Enrique uh, Olivia. He's going to be coming on the show Thursday, so tomorrow, two days? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. He's going to be coming on tomorrow. We're going to talk about this show. We're going to talk about uh, him introducing him to the audience so you guys get to know a little bit more about him, kind of like what we just did with that last interview. Uh, And then we're also going to have uh, a couple other competitors on the show. Um, They are also 212, so it seems like a lot of these 212 guys are hopping on. Very exciting. Uh, I hope you enjoy those interviews. They're going to be coming out in the next two weeks. I have three new guests coming on, so enjoy those. But that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comment sections below what you want to see next or how I can improve these shows. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.